What if I told you that a 74-year-old man teaching seminars in a castle in Angus, Scotland would make me question everything I ever knew about masculinity? I'm six foot one, 225, a fucking twisted steel and panther piss. And I can take 10 snowflakes at a time and rip their fucking head off and shit down their neck. A lot of people come to me because I'm the alpha male father they never had. Like most internet marketers, Dan Pena has an image to uphold. His brand centers around what he wants you to believe a man should look like, talk like, behave like, and conduct business like. Raw and unfiltered, Dan is going to piss a lot of people off. And that's exactly the way he wants it. Dan isn't looking to be liked, he's looking to be respected. I don't want you to like me. And he wants to earn your respect through fear. Fear that he might send a tirade of explosive language your way if you simply ask the wrong question or question his history of business success. No, you're wrong. We can't what? keep it in the goddamn room. We cannot put it everything on the internet. Hey, we can put anything I want to fucking put on the internet, so shut the fuck up. Okay, I'll put anything on the internet. Yeah, well, I don't give a fuck with you. And if I don't like what you put on the internet while you're here, I'll throw you out of the fucking castle. And if you think I'm kidding, try me. He has no problem kicking people out of his seminars, which he hosts at his 15th century Scottish castle for misbehaving or questioning his teachings, with attendees paying upwards of $20,000 for the week-long training to learn the secrets of wealth from a perceived business titan that is no small expense to cover if your education ends a few days early. The goal of these seminars is to take the unsuccessful version of you, delete your hard drive, and have you exit the castle with the personality traits similar to the historical business legends that helped shape the country into what it is today. I just named five of the greatest names in business in the last 150 years. And they all have one thing in common. They're ball busters. They're hard as fucking nails. QLA seminars upon first glance remind me of Fight Club. This three letter acronym creates a cult like following where the staunchest supporters claim it's a lifestyle only for the hungriest one tenth of one percent future business success heroes, whereas those on the outside may just view it as another seminar promising generational wealth with the instructor as the only one making any money. Most of the people on this, this is what you should do. Metaphorically speaking. You should have rolled down the inside of your fucking fat mother's thigh, you stupid cunts. Dan loves to push the buttons of his students. He's the bully on the playground always wanting to test just how far he can go before the little punk kid finally gets mad enough and punches back. His goal is to make you uncomfortable. He wants to ensure that you will never forget who Dan Pena is and your experience with him will never leave your memory. He claims to have been this way since he was a child. Raised in a tough neighborhood in East LA, Dan was a troublemaker since he was a child, telling stories about playing with lions, picking bar fights with his buddies, and acting in a rebellious teenage manner are common anecdotes during the character build-up stage of all of Dan's speeches on stage. Now we were really bad, not like the current crop of cunts. When we said we were going to rip your head off and shit down your neck, we fucking meant it. And to get a guy's shoulders after he got his head off and to try to crap down his neck is, is not easy. It's not fucking easy. Normally, Reuben and Walt had to hold him still. Hold him still, goddammit. I'm going to shit down his chest. I want to shit down his neck. These stories are to remind you that he grew up in an era when men acted like men are supposed to. Dan's household was a similar environment to the military as his father served in two wars and wanted to raise him with discipline. It was common for Dan to receive spankings after acting out of line. You can hear the discipline from his father in his actions and behaviors today. For someone so keen on teaching others to get out of their comfort zone in order to succeed, Dan fails to ever care enough to leave his. Dan is a man stuck in a generation that left him a long time ago. No longer is a man defined by having such simple characteristics. Stoic, motionless, tough in the face of danger, but men of today can be extremely diverse. We are allowed to question authority, discuss emotions and failures openly, and treat women as equals. The first meeting, you're never going to get laid. Because you're wishing and hoping, just like on your fucking deals. Well, maybe if I send her a nice card and some flowers and some candy and shit, make her fatter than she is, you know, just spread that. I used to tell the girls, just spread that candy on your fat ass. Don't even bother your stomach to digest it. Dan yearns for his childhood era to return. This is why you hear him lash out unsolicited critiques of today's men every 20 minutes in the speeches and interviews he gives. And you wonder why the country, the world's so fucked up. I can see. And that's why I call you snowflakes. He wants the era of men going to war, being emotionless, and focusing on work so that the woman can stay at home taking care of the house where she belongs to return so that he no longer has to face the new culture America finds itself in. He focuses so much attention on such a small minority of emasculated men that it makes you wonder what kind of people he hangs around if that's what he interprets today's men being like. To me, this makes me wonder why he comes across as an old man needing so much validation for his masculinity. 
Which brings me back to my initial point. What is masculinity and who gets to define it? Is it being someone who yells and belittles others in order to help them achieve their full potential? Or is it someone like Jocko Willink, who is a way more cool, calm, and collected with a deep voice, a history of leading men into war, and someone who holds personal accountability to the highest degree? To me, he is the definition of what a man should look like, talk like, behave like, and conduct business like. But am I the gatekeeper for determining how a man should behave, or just an outside observer? Because I thought everybody had self-esteem like I did. I thought everybody had self-confidence like I did. I thought everybody's dad had a pair. I was fucking wrong. Dan's goal is to become the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Not the greatest businessman, not running the greatest business, but becoming top dog, numero uno of all high-performance business coaches the world has ever seen. I couldn't help but be reminded of J.K. Simmons' character Terrence Fletcher in the movie Whiplash watching Dan Pena as they both have similar ways of going about trying to get the best out of their students. Dan's self-esteem is unquestioned. The man teaching seminars, giving interviews, and yelling on stage has supreme confidence in himself and his teachings. But if a man is so convinced that he is the epitome of what a man should look like, talk like, and behave like, then why does he feel the need to always market himself as more than he really is? Right now, he's an educator and a salesman. His sole business is running QLA seminars at his castle in Scotland and acting as a mentor for all of his former students, including the one who shall not be named. He sells himself by using his students' success as the metric of his talents and net worth. When his former students enter into the QLA framework lifestyle, all future dollars they earn in business deals goes on Dan's scoreboard of created wealth in the world. I have kids, mentees, like him, that have created $775 billion since 1993 in transactions, buying and selling companies, taking companies public. Shout out to CoffeeZilla for finding the inconsistencies in Dan's story about attacking a bear. Dan never seemed to grow out of the phase most pubescent boys go through where they need to enhance every story to make themselves appear more masculine. To me, masculinity is having extreme confidence internally and never needing external validation. Internal confidence comes from past experience, success, and has nothing to do with anything on the outside, meaning the external world. Someone who has internal confidence does not need validation from external sources. That is one of the most important characteristics of masculinity in my opinion. If we're using this metric as a qualifier for masculinity, then why does Dan feel the need to always seek validation by attributing his students' success to his marketing slogans as if it's his own personal net worth? This is an indicator of low self-esteem in my opinion. If Dan really was the business guru and industrial leader he wants us to believe, wouldn't he build up multiple businesses himself and then use that success as his marketing slogan? What are you going to tell your grandchildren? What are you going to tell your children 20, 25 years from now? What did you do, Grandpa? What did you do, Grandma, during the greatest transformation of motherfucking wealth in the history of the world? What did you do, other than sit on your fucking hands? What did you do to take advantage of the greatest transformation of wealth in the history of the planet? What did you do? Not a fucking thing. That's what you're going to say. The goal of his seminar is to let you believe that you can achieve generational wealth in three to seven years. You can achieve this level of success by following the QLA methodology. Like most internet marketers, he wants you to believe it's possible to go from being a janitorial, brainless turd bucket into business elite within just a few years. How? By following their system. This is where a lot of people will view Dan Pena as a scammer since we're starting to get trained on how these internet marketers get us hooked, have us open our wallets, and have us leaving underwhelmed when we finish their educational product. But Dan's program is different. He makes it clear that it's only going to work for a small minority of people. The QLA methodology is predicated on the fact that only a small percentage of people are going to do what it takes to fully implement his system. You know why I have a sore back? 25 years of carrying you fat asses across the goal line. He often touts his former student's success as a reason to believe his system works. Dream big. How big? Doing multi-million dollar business deals within a year of completing Dan's seminar. I can point you to former students with questionable ethics, former students who are frauds, and former students who didn't succeed, but Dan has never promised success nor has he claimed that everyone succeeds when they leave the castle. Dream big and it may happen to you. I cannot help but have laser beam focus on Dan's blinking. He will not be winning a staring contest anytime soon. Thanks to this article from Psychology Today, research also shows that when we are nervous or troubled, our blink rate increases, a phenomenon often seen with liars but also frequently seen with people under stress. 
Dan seems to blink a lot when giving interviews where the topics include his business success, how much money he made during his business career, and how much he's worth. I'll let you form your own opinion. One thing is clear, Dan inflates his worth, his business earnings, and his student success whenever and wherever he can. This is him selling his program and his teachings. If you look into his business history, everything lines up with what he says and what public records seem to indicate. The one thing that we the audience need to take into account is how inflated income and net worth numbers can be. He claims he took $820 and turned it into $450 million. Well, his company had a market cap of $450 million at, at its peak, meaning the business itself was worth $450 million. He had at least one partner, but probably many equity partners. His whole QLA methodology centers around building a dream team and sharing equity with a team of people so there could be a hundred hands eating from that company's earnings, possibly. I'm bringing this up because when he says his company was worth $450 million, he may have only had 20% equity, which means he was worth $90 million. He has a history of resorting to the largest number possible to detail his success, so I think it's fair to assume that he's doing it here as well. He may have made $50 million from this company, which is insanely awesome, difficult, and worth recognition. But why do we, the audience, always get the sense that he has this inherent need to inflate every single income and net worth number to satisfy his ego? My initial base was eight, I call it a thousand bucks. Okay. Okay. And my exit base was 500 million. Okay. 500 million dollars. And uh, of course I had a lot of shareholders, it wasn't just me. Dan has mentioned that he had a falling out around 10 years after creating the company. So in the early 1990s, he was no longer with the company. According to Relationship Science, here is Sabine Oil and Gas Holdings purchasing Great Western Resources, Dan's company, for $48 million in January of 1997. It's just food for thought to show you that numbers that are talked about online are not always as great as they seem. Dan isn't worth anywhere close to what he implies he's worth. Has he made money? Of course, and lots of it. He was really successful even before Great Western. He has a history of succeeding at wherever he tries. But this series is centered around seeking transparency in the social media celebrities' claims, and I just don't see it here. What is QLA? We simply don't talk about it, Spencer. His methodology of running businesses is essentially buying businesses from distressed owners and using 100% leverage to buy the business without any money out of your pocket. Sounds confusing, right? It's not that confusing when you research as much as I did for this video. Step one is to find an industry of business you'd like to target. Step two is to build your dream team consisting of people with decades of experience in that specific industry. Step three is to find a distressed and motivated business owner interested in selling. Step four is to offer to buy his or her business using seller financing. And the answer, no, 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 not some. You start with 100% owner finance. I can pay you whatever the fuck you want, you meathead retard. Step five is to buy the business using a combination of a commercial loan and seller financing. Step six is to pay your dream team and yourself money in the form of equity in the deal. I find it interesting that the most important step of his system is to embody the QLA methodology, but he doesn't. He has one public business success, which he eventually left or got booted from, and then went to teaching. That's usually a sign that someone makes more money from teaching than they do by implementing whatever it is that they are teaching. In conclusion, I enjoy the QLA seminars on YouTube, I enjoy learning a new way to buy businesses, and I find humor in some of the rants Dan Pena goes on. I think he's been wildly successful in his career and deserves a lot of praise and recognition for being a mentor to a lot of people running successful businesses today who may not have been had Dan not taught his seminars. The marketing hype turns me off, however. Hey, cunts! Don't forget to click the subscribe button!